So the geography of Oklahoma is really interesting and important to understanding the history of our state because a lot of what we do in our state has to do with our geography. And so it matters because of where we are located. And where we are located impacts not only the physical land that we have, but also temperature, climate, wind, rain, tornadoes, all of those things impact the history of the state of Oklahoma. And so geography is a really good place to start because it really um, has a deep impact on our state. So this lecture will be in two parts. The first part will be for Monday and Tuesday. The second part will be for Thursday and Friday this week. Um, on day one, so on Monday and on Tuesday, we're going to get, um, you're going to get assigned to groups. In those groups, you are going to um, work with a partner, group of two. This will, um, this will be both A and B groups together. Um, and what you guys will do is you will work together on this project and we will present the projects on Wednesdays when we meet together over Zoom so that when we're all together, we can present them and then we don't have to use our class time for these presentations because we already have an opportunity where every single person will be on Zoom together, regardless of whether or not they're virtual or regardless of um, whether or not they're in class or somewhere in between. So we're going to make sure that you guys are able to work with people from group A and group B um, so that you um, will be able to see them and interact with them a little bit more. So be on the lookout for that. This is lecture part one. Part two will be next um, for day two, uh, day two, Thursday and Friday. So the physical geography of Oklahoma, a couple of facts and figures for you. Every single lake in the state is man-made, made by dams of rivers that have created a lake behind it. So Grand Lake, where m many of you go, um, is a dam of the Grand River, the Neosho River, and behind the dam is where you have the lake where all the activities are. There are a ton of rivers that flow from Oklahoma that has to deal with the geography of where it's situated um, relative to um, a big mountain range to our west, the Rocky Mountains. There are a few mountains um, the Wichita Mountains, the Arbuckle Mountains, um, they're not necessarily what we would consider to be a ton of mountains um, like you would see in Colorado or in um, California or Washington or Oregon, but they're, they exist in Oklahoma. And the state of Oklahoma is not as flat as people would like you to believe. Um, any visitor that comes to Oklahoma that I interact with are super surprised at how uh, not flat it is. Um, in certain places. There are definitely places that are flat, but I think where we are on the eastern half of the state, definitely a lot more green and not as flat as people would anticipate. There are 10 main geographic regions that you have summarized, um, and those 10 geographic regions are all unique in their own way. They're pretty similar, but they're, they're pretty unique um, in, in how they look and what they do and, and how they kind of um, interact with the rest of the state. So what does our physical geography in Oklahoma provide? Most of the state is in the very southern part of the Great Plains. And the Great Plains stretch from, you know, the Dakotas down to northern Oklahoma. And they provide great farmland, right? We think Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, right? The breadbasket of the United States, even into the Midwest, where there's good farming, um, Oklahoma is a part of that, if not, um, you know, not always believed to be a part of the Great Plains, but geographically speaking, they're very similar to, um, to those other states around, around us. Some political geography facts for you. Oklahoma is 70,000 square miles. Um, it's 45 million acres big in area. It is the 18th largest state by area. Alaska is number one. There are 77 counties in Oklahoma. They are all named after Native American tribes or men. And 
almost the exact halfway point between Los Angeles and Washington, D.C. is the state of Oklahoma. It is a flyover state to the max um, because of where it's located, um, right in between the two coasts. And it is a meeting point between warm air from the Gulf and Arctic air from the North, which we'll talk about in lecture number two, that provides interesting weather uh, patterns, particularly in the spring. The population is 3.95 million. The city of Oklahoma City has about 600,000 people. The metro, so the surrounding cities of Oklahoma City, like Edmond and all of the other cities, is about 1.3. Tulsa population is about 405,000, and the Tulsa Metro, so all of our surrounding uh, uh, cities, are about a million people. So half of the population of the state of Oklahoma is made up with two metro areas. Um, we really have two and a half large cities, if we want to include Lawton in there. Um, and that is where the majority of the population comes from. We have a lot of small towns that have a couple hundred people or maybe a thousand people. Um, that add up to the rest of the 2 million that we have. So half the population live in cities and half the population live outside of the Tulsa and Oklahoma City metro. And um, that is the kind of the nature of the state of Oklahoma. The climate of Oklahoma um, is something that we're going to talk about on day one. How would you describe the climate of Oklahoma? Write that in your notes, please. Climatologists would describe Oklahoma as humid subtropical. And in the late summer, July, August, early September, we would agree with this humid subtropical description. It is humid. It rains a lot. Um, we have pop-up storms that happen. It's subtropical. Um, because of this rain phenomenon, but it's not really tropical. Um, that's more further south. But the humid subtropical um, means that we have an average temperature of about 60 degrees. We have short, mild winters, and we have long, hot summers. And that's why we have a humid subtropical climate. Our mild winters are described by average temperature and snowfall. We would be honest with ourselves. Um, if we're being about the, the climate of Oklahoma is, is, relatively, is relatively mild. And then our long, hot summers, right? Summer really starts in, in March sometimes or April um, and continues through, through November a lot of times. So long, hot summers, short, mild winters, even though we hate it, our climate is really temperate. It's not dramatic even though it feels dramatic a lot of times. Um, the highs and the lows are pretty similar. Um, and we go from, you know, the high 90s to the, to the 30s. Um, but we don't go from the high 90s to the teens or to the negatives, um, like, some, like some states in the Northeast do. Um, so in Oklahoma, the temperature varies between North and South. The northernmost part of the state typically is, is cooler. It's warmer in the south as we get closer and closer to the equator. Um, the climate in the south, of the southern part of the state, is, is more resembling of a Texas um, climate, a north Texas climate, than it is a southern Kansas climate. Um, and then rainfall varies east and west. And the reason why it varies from east to west is because of the Rocky Mountains. And so the Rocky Mountains are directly to the west of the panhandle of Oklahoma, and as a result of the Rocky Mountains positioning, it creates a rain shadow in Oklahoma and causes the panhandle to look more like New Mexico than it does like the rest of the state. So we have heavier rain here in eastern Oklahoma than we do in, in the western part because of the location of the western part of the state to the Rocky Mountains. So this is where we're going to end our first lecture. We're going to um, stop here, and the quiz will be over all of this information in this first lecture. The quiz will be on formative, so if you are at home, you will take that quiz on formative. It will become active during your class time, and it will close during the end or at the end of your class time. So you have 45 minutes to take the quiz on 
um, day one uh, if you're in group A or day two if you're in group B. 